Ever since SpaceX founder Elon Musk first proposed his idea for the creation of a new mass population high-speed transit system called a Hyperloop that could move you from Los Angeles to San Francisco, a 680-kilometer journey in less than 35 minutes flat, companies sprung up in hopes of making his dream a reality. But Hyperloops aren't limited to a single route between LA and San Fran. They could be implemented anywhere across the world. With so many companies and so many possibilities, a competition was dedicated to determining how and where Hyperloops could be built across the world. Out of 2,600 contestants, only 35 were selected as finalists. One of them was a company called Hypercan, whose proposal could completely revolutionize our conception of travel in Canada, shortening travel times to levels we never could have dreamed of only a few decades ago. Super high-speed trains have already forever changed travel in Asia. The Chinese Shanghai Maglev Magnetic Levitation Line is the fastest operating train in the world. It has a maximum operating speed of 430 kilometers an hour, allowing it to complete its 30-kilometer intercity journeys in less than 7 minutes and 40 seconds. The Chinese government has now built over 29,000 kilometers of high-speed rail lines. The Beijing-Shanghai High-Speed Railway, with an average operating speed of 350 km per hour, has made a 1,318 km journey only take about 4 hours. To put that into perspective, in order to cover the exact same distance, it would take the average North American rail train over 14 hours and 50 minutes to complete the trip. And that's only if it's operating at 100% efficiency and didn't make any stops for fuel. Just imagine how much easier it would be to get across Canada with a train like that. But Hyperloop trains are even faster. While the top speed of the Shanghai Maglev is 430 km an hour, Hyperloop 1's designs can supposedly reach a mind-boggling top speed of 1,220 km per hour. That's 7 kilometers per hour shy of breaking the world land speed record, and only 19 kilometers per hour away from breaking the sound barrier. The Canadian Hyperloop team that was included in the top 35 proposals in the world could have designed a proposal for anywhere across the globe. They chose to focus on Canada's busiest travel corridor, the transit systems between Toronto and Montreal, that also happens to be home to North America's busiest highway, the 401. When the difference these trains can make in travel times are expressed in terms that are close to home, it makes you understand why these designs are so wildly incredible and exciting. The trip between Ottawa and Toronto, which ideally takes around 3 hours by car, would be reduced to only 27 minutes. The trip between Montreal and Ottawa would be over in 12 minutes instead of 2 hours, and trips between Toronto and Montreal would take 39 minutes, turning the currently 4.5 hour odyssey into a slightly longer than average commute time for most Canadians. And the advantages are more than just a convenience. As other countries like China pour billions into their infrastructure, Canada will continue to fall behind threatening to eliminate the economic advantage that has kept a country of 30 million in the top 10 economies in the world. Experts believe that the existence of such a system could attract businesses, investments, and workers to the region, allowing the Toronto-Montreal corridor to gain an advantage in the global economy. That's not the only advantage. Hyperloop systems are carbon emission free. And like many infrastructure projects of this magnitude, its construction would likely create thousands of jobs for Canadian workers. Think how different your life could be if a round trip between Montreal and Toronto didn't consume your entire day. Instead, you could get on a train in Toronto to go to Montreal for lunch, and be back in time for dinner with hours to spare. That ease of travel could help fix Canada's housing crisis too. Urban sprawl would not be a problem, but actually a solution. If the main difficulty of getting into these cities, which is the time it takes, is removed, there would no longer be a massive incentive to live nearby to them. You could live anywhere. 
And with that radical alteration in demand, housing prices could suddenly become more affordable. And having to pay for the crazy costs of living in an urban center would no longer act as a barrier to working in an urban center. Of course, the cost will be fairly large. It's estimated that the hypercan system would cost between 8 to 10 million dollars. And as anyone who ever dealt with construction projects knows, it could end up costing a whole lot more. And there's one serious issue. Transportation Canada published a report which came to the conclusion that hyperloops are not currently a viable mode of transport. That could turn this idea into a non-starter. Others have speculated that the nature of work is changing, that COVID-19 has changed our relationship with what we define as a workplace, and that maybe in the future, traveling to work will seem preposterous. But for a country whose confederation is largely due to the promise of interconnectivity through a rail system called the Canadian Pacific Railway that's still in operation today, it wouldn't be out of character. These new train systems outpace airlines. This could be one of the greatest uses of government funds Canadians have seen in a long time, especially if this system can one day span the entire country. That warrants a much more serious conversation about this proposal, especially for a country whose highway congestion is increasing exponentially. If Canada wants to stay competitive on the world stage, it needs to ensure that its infrastructure is competitive as well.